Hello, Nebraska. On behalf of the Nebraska Greats Foundation, I want to personally welcome you to the annual Celebrity Sports Night. This organization speaks from the heart. Helping former college athletes in need is something nobody else but Nebraska does. So tonight is special, and you're special for being here. Thank you. Now, what I want you to do is to enjoy dinner, enjoy each other, enjoy the show, Thanks to Larry the Cable Guy and Tyrus and Zach Miller. But before you leave, I want you to dig down deep. Give till it hurts so that we can make sure that former college athletes from every school who have made Nebraska proud knows that Nebraska loves them. Let's win the national championship. Okay, maybe that was a little bit much. (laughs) Let's get to the championship playoffs. That's better. Yeah. Let's get this party started. So... The question is, how did this all happen? I mean, how did, how did the Nebraska Greats Foundation ever actually come to be? Well, it was about a quiet football player from Alabama. event in Omaha. Had about 50x former Husker football players there. Then I see this young man over here perspiring profusely, shaking, and I kind of thought, I wonder who this young man is and what's wrong. So I go over and I shake his hand, tell him I'm Jerry Murtaugh. Man stands up, looks me in the eye and said, I'm Andre Franklin. And Andre said, I've been sick lately and Hitchhiking from Lincoln, Nebraska tonight didn't help me. I don't know exactly where his mind was at at that time, because walking to Omaha is probably about a 16-hour walk. Andre, why would you do that? And looked me straight in the eyes and said, because I gave my word to a Husker. Got him a ride home, but that's the problem. I had seen him for about six months and came down and he had put on all his weight. And we talked about him going to the hospital, and he refused to. He refused to do that. It was hard for Andre to complain. Sometimes I wish that I that he had been a little more vocal, because I never knew quite what was going on inside of him. The doctor said, "You know, if you don't start taking better care of yourself, the next funeral they'll come to is yours." And six months later, he died. And when I heard that, I started thinking to myself, uh, "Where was I?" what this man did for me, and I knew he was sick. Why didn't I follow up with this? I have a daughter that's mentally challenged, and he would not hesitate to have her her on his arm and take care of her. He was a good man. He was a good man. Andre was one of my best friends. Uh, His whole family was uh, special. We thought it was pretty important to keep Andra's memory alive, to remind each of us how precious the lives of these heroes really are. So each year, the Nebraska Greats Foundation chooses a person, a family, or a company that lives our mission, giving a hand to a memory maker. This beautiful trophy is also a gift from talented Omaha artist Joe Punchenter, who is with us tonight. Joe, please stand so that we can give you and your lovely wife, Lisa, a round of applause and a proper thank you for your contribution. So, who joins our past winners? Bruce Weber, Kim and Tom Dinsdale, and Mike Barron?
I was first introduced to the Nebraska Greats Foundation after my cousin Jim, a former Husker All-American gymnast, uh, was paralyzed uh, in a bicycle accident. Uh, he was driving home from his studio one night, uh, hit a pothole, ended up in the ditch. Uh, later found, like I said, paralyzed uh, from the neck down. The family needed help. Uh, Jim needed help. Shannon needed help. Uh, that's where the Nebraska Greats stepped up and absolutely changed his life. Not only financially, but support-wise. After Jim uh, had gotten uh, uh, assistance, I wanted to pay it forward. I couldn't write big checks, so I decided to help Nebraska Greats Foundation uh, with their branding. So I don't know if this video is being shown before I stammer for a couple of minutes or after I stammer for a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a kind of behind the scenes guy. I consider myself a coach, a mentor, uh, and I tell anybody that I have the privilege of talking with, anything I can do, you can do better. I would invite you to please follow us on social media uh, reach out to your friends, reach out to your, your colleagues, and let's raise awareness for a great foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the 2022 Andre Franklin Service Award winner from the Nebraska Greats Foundation to Jason McCants. That looks a lot bigger in photos. Uh, when I work with the Nebraska Greats, either uh, individually with that guy uh, or as a group, my mantra uh, uh, about this organization uh, is a million is a statistic, one is a tragedy. We help these, the, these former athletes one at a time. Uh, we're not just throwing money at a, at a problem, but we're uh, involved with these people's lives, giving them emotional support at what I can only imagine at the lowest time uh, of, the, of their uh, life. Uh, last time I saw Jim and Shannon, uh, before the accident, we were at a barbecue uh, at my place, and Jim was tumbling and doing cartwheels with my kids, uh, laughing, having a great time with those guys, and uh, not too long after that, we got word that Jim was uh, in his accident. Uh, this foundation stepped up. Uh, that's why I uh, uh, serve. Uh, I, I'm very excited at the progress we've made in the last five uh, years, and I'm more excited about the, the next five years. Uh, and I will say it out loud, uh, the stigma against mental health for these former collegiate athletes uh, is getting less, so, so I really hope that we can help those folks. Uh, thank you. Andre was a great guy, and Jason's a great guy too. He took over our website and has made our website wonderful, engaging. It's a one-stop shop, and we couldn't have done it without him. He was a great guy, Franklin was, loved by the fans, his family, his teammates. He's our first inspiration, along with some very special people who are here tonight. These outstanding people present, uh, represent the, the recipients of your generosity and your prayers. Please welcome to the stage two recipients of grants from the Nebraska Greats Foundation, former Husker football fullback Willie Miller and a Concordia University Bulldog, Gerald Morris. Fellas. You'd think as football players, they'd move a little faster than that. <laughs> Dub Miller, where's Willie? Is Willie here? Hmm. He must be out of the, well, maybe he's taking a walk around the block to stay in shape. Huh, Willie? Maybe not. 
Well, that's a little unusual. Huh, okay. Let's talk to Gerald Morris. How about that? Gerald, thanks for coming by. Yeah. Um, Concordia Football. Tell us about yourself. Tell us about how you got from Dallas, Texas, to Concordia, to Seward, Nebraska. Well, well, there was a lot of college recruiting, but none of them really stood out. But I know I always wanted to go somewhere far for college. And when I visited Concordia, I remember my visit, Coach Dabrakow, when I walked in, he was like, Gerald Morris, and he seemed really excited to see me. And getting to talk to him on my visit, he just seemed like the good Christian man he is. And that's really what got me there. So you were injured in an automobile accident. Injured in an automobile accident? Is that right? Injured in an no. automobile Injured in an automobile accident. Uh, probably don't remember a lot about the accident. But what do you remember about what happened that day? Well, what happened that day, I know we let... I know we left Seward around 3 p.m. And I honestly, I like driving. I was with three of my teammates, and I said, it's a 16-hour drive. I'll drive until I get tired, and then one of y'all can take over. And I know we made it just in Utah, I believe, and my other teammate took over driving. I got in the back seat, and I went to sleep. And that was all of that day. Hmm. So you were in the back seat of the vehicle when uh, the accident occurred? Yes, I was, in, I was in the back seat. One of my teammates, he had fell asleep and drifted off the road into a ditch. I heard that it flipped three times. And I believe on the first flip that I was ejected and, and landed on the pavement. Okay, so... The next thing you know, you're in the hospital. And how long were you in the hospital, or how long were you in ICU? Well, I was in the ICU for, it was nine days. I was in the ICU for nine days. Nine days. They had me seduced, so I wasn't there. Hmm. So what were the injuries, Gerald? The injuries were fractures in my neck, collapsed lung, and traumatic brain injury. Wow. And there were just so many challenges you had to overcome after, you know, you were at the hospital. Talk about your challenges uh, just recovering from the injuries. Well, I saw about every doctor you could, you could see. And to recover, I really just had to wait. And, like, playing football, you know, we were right in the middle of all season, getting ready to start spring ball. And... And I just, I really just, I had to be patient because I was just glad to still be alive. And I knew I just had to wait. There's nothing I could do but be patient. I had to go to all the doctor appointments, take care of my body. There's certain things I can't do, certain things I still can't do, but I'm just glad to still be here. Okay, so what did the Nebraska Greats Foundation do for Gerald? The Nebraska Grace Foundation has helped me tremendously because you had a 21-year-old quarter million medical bill. I don't know what to do with that. Quarter of a million in medical bills. A quarter of a million. Wow. That's a lot of stress on your family. Yeah. So you got help from the Concordia community, and then we were able to come through too. Yeah, Nebraska Grace. I didn't know what Nebraska Grace Foundation was. When I found out, it really amazed me that an organization like this exists because it shows there's people out there that still want to help people. Yeah. Well, Coach Dabrakow from Concordia reached out to us and mentioned that Gerald might have a need, and we we're so pleased to come through. So what now? Uh, getting a degree, going to wrap up your, your studies and get a degree, and then what? Well, I'll be graduating next May. And then next summer or fall, I plan to go to basic training for the National Guard. All right. <laughs> Gerald, it's wonderful to see you. It's great to have you here. Congratulations on your recovery. Gerald Morris, everyone.
Now, Gerald isn't the only one who's going to join us tonight. We are so proud to be joined from Mobile, Alabama right now. Lots of great technology from Mobile, Alabama tonight. We have with us Jeremy Fossum from Doan University who is studying to be a physical therapist representing Doan University. Please welcome Jeremy Fossum. Jeremy, are you there? Oh man, what a day. First, I just want to give a shout out to everybody there in Nebraska. Wish I could be there right now. Uh, plan to make a trip up there at some point. Uh, shout out to Larry the Cable Guy and to everybody that's at this event for making it happen. Uh, super proud, born and bred Nebraskan here. Um, that day was a whirlwind of a day back uh, right before Halloween, at the end of October last year. We uh, went in and got an MRI done and came to find out that I had this mass that was later to be found to be a tumor um, on my temporal lobe on the right side. So kind of right back in there, I still have a scar that can't be seen from that. And they discovered that that was kind of causing these absentee seizures that I had had beforehand. And within a week's time, we had had a, we scheduled a, a surgery to get that removed and and kind of go from there. So how did you find out about the Nebraska Greats Foundation and what did the foundation do for you? Well, ironically, I was uh, not actually in the state of Nebraska when I found out about it, but I was blessed that my dad, who uh, gets the opportunity to be interviewed and, and speak there tonight, um, he was actually the one who kind of found out about it. He got invited to an event by my old coach from Doan University where I went to school there in Nebraska from a bachelor's degree and played baseball and he got invited by him to a Nebraska Greats event where he got to meet some some of the members there and uh, he kind of just remembered that and how great it was and how, good, how, how much fun he had at the event and just everything about the Greats Foundation and when we, when we discovered that we were going to have bills to pay uh, especially with being uninsured, being a new grad and waiting to get a job as a therapist and be, become insured. We, we really didn't know what we were going to do at first, but he kind of threw out the idea of looking into the Greats Foundation to maybe be able to assist with some of those bills, being uninsured and having this unexpected surgery and, and all the hospital things that kind of came up with that. And so that's kind of how we found out about it, it was just, just a blessing from somebody else who, who had gone to events before and had been invited, which kind of got him an introduction there. And well, the rest is, is my story really. So, so what's your long-term prognosis uh, now that you're past the surgical part, what's the long-term prognosis for you? Uh, long-term prognosis was, uh, it kind of just depends on each person, ironically, which is not ever, never the answer you really want, but I was blessed to be, out of the hospital within a week's time from the surgery and a few months down the road was able to have an MRI done and uh, thank the Lord no regrowth of the tumor at that point and now the prognosis is come August September of this year to get another MRI done just to keep track of it and uh, just got off of anti-seizure medicine that I was on so knock on wood no seizures since that point and so I, my prognosis is to be able to live more of a quote-unquote normal healthy life where I can drive and do the things I was kind of prevented from doing before and after sitting for this board exam on the 27th the other day here to become a licensed physical therapist I'll then be able to I'll be getting the results here in this first week of May and from that point be able to work as a physical therapist doing my dream job and being able to live more of a normal life than I was really able to because of this tumor and the seizures and, and what it had caused. And so, and I've actually heard of other people that have had the same thing and have had the surgery and have had um, great, you know, uh, quality of life afterwards. And so that's really what the prognosis is for it is to be able to just live a more normal and healthy life. Well, uh, we'll let you go because you've got a lot of studying and a lot of wrapping up to do in your PT school. Anything else for us here in Omaha tonight? I just want to say really thank you to everybody in the foundation. A shout out to, to Sandy. She's been great along the way, just being constantly uh, connected with communication and just, I'm just uh, 
really, really blessed. I want to just thank God and, and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for what for what has happened, because I never would have expected any of this come having to do this surgery and being, you know, being down here in Alabama, far away from where I was born and raised to then have this foundation from my home state to be able to do, to do these things that I'd never thought I deserved. So I just want to give a shout out to everybody who's there, family and friends, and to all the people in the foundation, just a big thank you for all of it. Um, I can't wait till I'm able to come up there and and meet and kind of pay it forward, you know, give back, help others out in the same ways that I may have been dealing with struggling with things as well. And just, I don't think of myself as a, you know, as an inspiration story or, you know, as a miracle or anything, but I know Sandy always said, told me, ah, oh, you're a miracle. And I think that, you know, that's true of anybody that's, that's dealing with things and that's, you know, given these opportunities to be helped from whatever they're, you know, disease, diagnosis, sickness, anything that they're dealing with, I think that, in, that they're all miracles for, you know, being able to get through those things. And so just a huge shout out to everybody there and can't wait till I'm able to come up and, and see everybody face to face. Great, Jeremy. Congratulations. Thanks and God bless. Jeremy Fossum. What do you think? Let's get to the main event. How about the main event? Now you might recognize these guys. Spud like fodder here for Tyrus. Speaking the truth. Yes. Oh, gut fell. Yes. I'm 6'8", 357 pounds, and I'm black. I've never made a first move in my entire life. <laughs> I enjoy my freedom. I'm often described as a lazy panda in that department because I just wait. One final thought, Tyrus. Hey, yo, hard work pays off. Dreams do come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. He is the largest man in the Western Hemisphere. His size exceeded only by his celebrity. Only his football teammates at UNK knew for sure for what he was destined, and now every one of them wants free tickets to the Gutfeld Show. Ladies and gentlemen, from Fox News and everywhere else, Tyrus. <laughs> Next. I think you're going to recognize this guy, too. I'm a huge Nebraska Cornhusker fan. I grew up, of course, in Nebraska. I was born there. My name's made like tough, maybe, but without the tough. I want you to stop this truck and let me out immediately. <laughs> Get it done, Wendy! Get her done, Wendy! <laughs> Daddy, can we ride the roller coaster? Yeah, we ain't riding the roller. You do realize, son, they put that up in an hour in a parking lot. Uh, New York is awesome. But they say it's a city that never, never sleeps. Never which I think is garbage, because I stepped over six people sleeping all the way in there. <laughs> hey, what the hell's going on? He had a set where he was talking about uh, people being covered with moles. My sister is uh, covered with moles. My sister is covered in moles. Right, or, or his mom has yeah. so many moles and the kids use it as a climbing wall or something. And from the minute I could even know what football was, Nebraska was one of the greatest football teams of all time. Movie star, comedian, singer, songwriter, and our very own Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> he was really a gymnast in high school, yeah. I was. I used to. Thank, oh. you, thank you so much. I used to see all these athletes out here. A lot of people don't know, but I. I ran track, yeah. cross country down in Pawnee City, and I do believe I still hold the state record for taking the most poops in the woods. <laughs> so, 
And let me just say, in all honesty, thanks for having me. This is really cool. The, the video is so touching. And you guys, I mean, what you do for these folks is unbelievable. And what's the name came out and thanked me for being here. And it's, <laughs> look, I just got in my truck, came up, made a sandwich. All right. I mean, I'm happy to be here. I mean, seriously, everybody else that puts this together, that's who should be thanked. I mean, I just, I, I just drove up. So. Okay. Well, but it, that's very nice. Thank you. It this was is, good of you to make bail. <laughs> yeah. I saw about my outfit. I just actually came from a wedding, so I apologize. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have time to put my nice right. clothes yeah. on right. and. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. And the bride was huge. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to bag on her, but uh, I caught the garter belt, and uh, for the last uh, two weeks, I've been using it to tie up cordwood on my pickup truck. <laughs> All right, so it's really All right. Hard. Tyrus, you came all the Tyrus. <laughs> Look at him. You know, I make a living sitting next to weird people, so this is <laughs> it's another day at the office for me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not messing with him. I know that much. <laughs> I mean, geez, he's worth like five electoral votes. <laughs> uh, how was the trip in, Tyrus? Uh, the trip was great. Um, I appreciate the connection flight, but um, <laughs> when, I, uh, when I got here, they said they were going to have a little guy pick me up, and uh, apparently you guys found Bigfoot, and uh, I had to look up to somebody I used to pick on uh, back in UNK, so it was kind of, it was nice. Brett picked me up, and it was phenomenal, and uh, really, really excited to be here, and it's just a small world, how it all kind of comes together. Uh, I don't know if you know this, I wrote a little, wrote a little book, and it came out, and uh, went number one, and all that cool stuff. Yeah. And, and it fell in time the same time I got a chance to be here. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the problem is I called out sick. So, uh, but God feel health to get over it. But one of the little caveats and surprises, not just being here with you guys tonight and being a chance to support such a great cause, was that you guys had a surprise for me. You had my offensive line coach, Coach Morris, w is here. So I hadn't that, seen coach him. Coach Morris. Yeah, I hadn't seen him since he made run extra for missing economics class. So. So, <laughs> so, did, so did Coach Morris at the time say, look, son, you have a future as a movie star, a television person. Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. He was <laughs> such a warm, loving coach, and he was always giving us really nice uh, compliments, like, you know, move your ass, and I could set a sundial on it, and <laughs> it's called zone step, not bone step. So, yeah, he was always, he even told me tonight when he saw me on TV, he was sitting in his bed quietly and flipping through the channels and he flipped past and he was like, wait, that looked like he flipped back and he's like, that's, that's George. That my, and he's like, he's on a Fox News network and they're asking questions about fiscal responsibility. <laughs> and my coach said, don't say nothing. <laughs> and he leaned closer like, don't say nothing. <laughs> And then I answered the question, well, thank you. And then he took credit for all of it. See? <laughs> I did it. So. How did you get to Kearney, Nebraska from South Central? Hard work, uh, dedication. <laughs> um, I was a, uh, an all-conference blue chip, uh, all-American in, in junior college, so that's so that's like being assistant to assistant manager. But uh, I had a lot of scholarships, offers, and stuff. But um, unfortunately, uh, for those of you who read the book, I didn't have the best upbringing, and I was kind of raising myself. And apparently, it cost like 50 or 60 bucks to take an SAT, and I didn't have it on me. So um, when I was asked to fill out college scores, they said, uh, what's your SAT? And I said, oh, I'll have my people get it to you, which should have been a tip that an 18-year-old said he had people. But, and I, so I just faked the numbers. But I was clever. I didn't overfake. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't go for like an 830. I was like 720, you know? And like the ACT, they're like, what was your ACT? I was like, three, four. 
It's like four, yeah, four, four is it one? You know, so and it was doing great, but I had a scholarship to Washington State and um, the, uh, everything was fine, I was gonna sign my stuff and the, the lady was gonna get me a cultural scholarship to go with my stuff. Um, and that's when they found out that I might have smudged my SATs just a scotch. The cultural stuff? Yeah, so I was um, not gonna be going to a division one school and it looked like I was just gonna be going back to the hood with my friends and I get a call from uh, Coach Hoffman who was the strength and conditioning coach and a coach Morris. And, uh, they, and I, I didn't want a red shirt because red shirt was a kiss of death. You sit out for a year while you get your grades together, you end up with three kids and working at JCPenney. So <laughs> that's just real. And uh, they said, hey, we're gonna fly you out to Nebraska. Well, only, you know, when I hear Nebraska, it's like corn husker. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> Redemption, and they're like, hey, and, and our rules are different here. You don't need an SAT. And I was like, phenomenal. <laughs> so threw up the deuces, and uh, they flew me out to luxurious uh, Omaha. And, then I, and it was a lot different then than it was now. There was a lot of snow, and it was like a long, long drive. They didn't tell me that. And then they brought me to the beautiful Holiday Inn Extravaganza Center in Kearney, Nebraska. It, and I, I don't know if you've been there or not, but yeah. it's, it's, it's AstroTurf and pool. There's a, yes, there's a huge chlorine smell, but that's because it's clean. Uh, and they were having like a mixer party, so I did that. And then they took me for a tour of the campus, and this is the part that just really, I was, they had me at, um, where you're walking right now is where they film Terms of Endearment. Right here, right here. It's nothing more impressive than a kid from the hood hearing about a movie he's never heard of and didn't quite know what endearment meant. So, um, but that, and then I said, where's your weight room? And uh, Hoffman and, and Coach Morris, they took us to the weight room and this is what, I'm making jokes, but this is what had me. They, they took me to the weight room and I just wanted a tour, they made me work out. But uh, <laughs> it was the same as every gym and every D1 school I had ever saw. It was state of the art, it was, it was everything. And he was like, listen, it, we're not D1, but we get the same funding as every school in this state. <laughs> and did you know that they filmed Terms of Endearment right here in this <laughs> school? And at, at that point, uh, they had me at hello. Yeah. Well, you've appeared in five films, so obviously the spark was lit. Yes. Uh, I eventually watched Terms of Endearment. What'd you think? You know? I can't watch that damn movie without crying. That little, <laughs> that little speech, like saying goodbye, and I was like... Yeah. That's what people say about my movies, and they're comedies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say... True story. We, people cry when they watch Delta Farce all the time. <laughs> That's why I like the Cars franchise. They're the only ones I've done with a two and a three after. <laughs> or five, six, yeah. seven. I mean, yeah. if it ain't broke. What was your ACT score? What is that again? Yeah. What was your ACT or SAT score? <laughs> my AZT your score? Your AZT. What was your AZT score? I got no idea. Yeah, and did you, no? Say three. No. Just say three. 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 It was a three. So I don't know how no. the Ivy League stayed away. No, I was actually the fortunate one in the family. Uh, <laughs> I was the first one to get my, because uh, they had internet, so I got my GED online. <laughs> Ex post facto, <laughs> years later you got your GED. <laughs> Very happy about it. You actually grew up in Florida. How did you get from Pawnee City to Florida? Well, I moved down there when I was 15. I moved to West Palm Beach, Florida when I was 15. My dad got a job down there. I didn't want to go because I wanted to stay there and work at the Wilson Hog Market and unload hog trucks. <laughs> I'm so glad I went now. <laughs> but that was my, that's what I wanted to do. I, you know, I lived next to Sail Barn and I raised pigs and but my dad, of course, I went down there. And I didn't like it at first, because I'm a country kid, and I missed livestock, and I missed hanging out with old farmers, and mm -hmm. spitting tuna back everywhere. And then I saw uh, what they call a uh, Florida girl. Florida girl. And I gave up pigs real quick. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, 
<laughs> that, that, that enticed me to enjoy the state a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, no, so I, I went down there and uh, uh, lived in West Palm Beach, and then I went to college in Georgia, Baptist College in Georgia. My AZT was three there, right. and uh, and then uh, started doing stand up in West Palm Beach. I liked it. And then uh, I started working a lot in Orlando. They had a lot of work for me. So then I moved to Sanford, Florida. I lived there 17 years and I got married and I told my wife, if we got kids, we're going back to Nebraska. I'm raising my kids like I grew up because I love the way that I grew up. Yeah. And so we brought our kids, they're Chinese, I can't figure that out, but we brought our kids here. <laughs> and I didn't even know we were gonna have kids, I just left it up to the Lord, we're gonna have kids, we have kids, we're not gonna plan nothing, and my wife got pregnant, and here's the funny thing, she's pregnant for three months and didn't even tell me, she didn't know how I would react. Right. And, uh, you know, and I didn't know any better, you know, because I was getting used to her, you know, I was always getting used to her throwing up after we had sex, so I had no idea, you know. <laughs> I had no idea, <laughs> but uh, we uh, but we had kids, moved them back up here, and it was the greatest thing I ever did. I, I'm glad my kids gr are growing up in Nebraska. It's the greatest place yeah. to live and raise kids, and and um, I love it. I love it. All right, so now you homeschool. So you homeschool your kids. Did you homeschool them? Were you teaching them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't, but we did homeschool our kids. Uh, what we did was uh, there was a couple of families that traveled a lot and dads were working a lot and kind of pooled their money and hired a couple of teachers and uh, we met over at my place and, you know, from third grade on to ninth grade, we educated our kids in a barn with about 15 other kids and my girl is in eighth grade now. My little boy, he's out, he's going to ninth grade. He's in a regular school, but it's awesome. I mean, my girl just, you know, they come around and do the testing. And, uh, I mean, in reading and writing and, and English, uh, she's already, she's testing at college level. Wow. So it's, it's amazing. It was amazing. Doing and, something right. Know, and I just wanted to homeschool my kids. We, got to, we travel a lot, and I love my kids. My kids have been with me since they were born. They grew up. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Obviously. Yeah. Well, no, because some kids don't oh, yeah. do that. I know. So, but it's a modern know, family. They yeah. grew up on a tour bus, and mm -hmm. I, they've, been, they've been with me oh. ever since they were born. So I love them. So I, uh, we homeschooled them, and we travel around together, and, you know, it's pretty awesome. I, I felt bad. I will say this. So I felt bad at uh, Father's Day because... They drew me a card, and they drew my picture on the card, and they wrote how much they love me. And I mean, your kids do that for you. It's awesome. And I was so mad at myself because, you know, because I hate being overweight, so I try to lose weight. I'm down 25 pounds, and I looked at the. I couldn't like look at them and go, "Oh, kids, I love you so much. That's so nice." All I thought about was. I'm not that fat, right? <laughs> and so then I feel bad. So like two days later, I go, hey kids, I don't know. I just want to let you know when you gave me the card a couple of days ago, it was like so awesome. And thank you so much, man. That, yeah, I mean, that's just awesome. But I just want to let you know, the picture was a little, that was funny, right? Because I'm not that fat. And my daughter goes, no, that's you. <laughs> And I said, no, it's not, I'm not that fat. And my kid, my boy goes, yeah. He goes, I'll prove it, watch. And he held the picture up to my cell phone and it unlocked my cell phone. <laughs> True story. Huh, so we're gonna talk about parenthood, awesome. All right. yeah. um, so I did mine a little different. Um, uh, those who watch the show know that I have four children. Uh, I have a seven-year-old, my baby, and I have a 10-year-old, and I have another 10-year-old, and another 10-year-old. Wow, three twins. Uh, three those, twins. Uh, no, no, none of my kids' hairs match. Um, I was, oh, listen, I'm in the Midwest. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, so they're with me. I raised them. But um, 
I, uh... Did you know they were going to be twins? So here's the deal. Well, they're, well, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're uh, pretend. Uh, another one. They're, well, they were kind of spread. I spread the twinage out over a couple months. So, um... <laughs> I know you're not getting this, so I'm just going to break it down. They're, they all had three different receptacles. So I was married, happily married for seven years, all you judgmental people in the crowd. And we weren't able to conceive. One of us was barren. And so uh, my ex-wife, I'm over that, is very, was proactive. She went to a fertility clinic. And anyone here ever been to a fertility clinic? Show of hands, anyone? Oh, don't be proud. Just, it's a, it's a nice thing for a woman. You know, there's doctors and nurses and they sit around you and they do a little test and, you know, and everyone's real nice and they bring you water. I went to a fertilizer clinic yeah. with my dad one Well, day. this is not that much different. <laughs> and then it was my turn. And do you know what it is? Well, it's, you know what? It's kind of like farming. You're a bull and they gotta milk you. And for those of us who are not comfortable with other people around you, it's very difficult. And they sent me to this little room with a cup and a mean old nurse with a horrible magazine, and which I thought she was very judgmental, assuming that I needed a magazine. Like, I, that's, I mean, I just thought that was rude. And then they put you in the room. I can hear them talking. I'm in the room, and I'm here, I'm like, <clears throat> well, you know, hopefully he'll hurry up. And, and then my wife's like, yeah, he does it all the time. I'm like, oh, I can't really... Defend myself, and then the worst thing happens. Yeah, oh, it gets worse. So I don't know if you guys noticed, I'm the big guy. They clearly forgot because they gave him the big chair, but that's cool. <laughs> We're all adults here, so I can just tell how it is. I find My damn it. elbow starts hitting the door, so everyone can hear me, and I can hear me, and I'm like, I'm, I sweat in a snowstorm, so I'm drenched now. It's not a good look. And the magazine is now melted onto my face. Was, so I just opened the door and I said, I can't do this. Can I, can I go home and like bring it back? And they're like, no, and this, that, whatever. And I said, well, just check her. If she's barren, then it's not me. And if she's fertile, then it's me. And she was fertile. So I'm barren. And we were driving home and she said, I want a divorce. And I said, why? It's because I'm barren. She's like, no, because you're an asshole who wouldn't take the test. And I was like, fine. Well, fine. Well, I don't know any of you guys out here have ever been divorced and told you barren. It's not a bad thing. You like, it's like a free, it's a free ticket to paradise, you know? So I was like, let the games begin. And as a divorcee, I was dating aggressively in the, in the WWE. And I got a phone call. And it was like, hey, what are you doing? Nothing, what are you doing? Who's this? Uh, I'm having a baby. Oh, congratulations. No, 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 your baby. <laughs> Fool, I'm barren, click. <laughs> then about a month later, I got another phone call. This one had a Spanish accent. It said, I'm having a baby. Again, congratulations. No, it's you. <laughs> Fool, I'm barren. <laughs> Then the third one, a phone call, I said, oh, maybe this is, this might be an issue. And <laughs> thanks to the good people in medical clinics in Florida, I have three beautiful 10-year-olds. And when we travel together, we go through TSAs and stuff, because I'm a proactive dad, and there's always that one smart-ass TSA agent who's like, and what's your name? Oh, I'm COC, I'm 10, and what's your name? I'm Nala, I'm 10, and what's your name? I'm Nairi, I'm 10, and then does this. And I was like, what? They're with me. And then they say, are they triplets? Lady, their hairs don't match and they're three different tones. Of course, they're not triplets. <laughs> but they're with me. I'm traveling with them. I love my children. And they'll be like, well, you know, it's like you have the International House of you know, Nations or International House of Pancakes if they don't end up being very smart. So <laughs> you did it your way, I did it mine. And they're all 10. They're all 10. So I never forget a birthday. Well, that gets tough sometimes. 2012 was a big year. For 2011 you. was a hell of a year. Yes, yes, it was. Fortunately, yes, it was. And there's a doctor somewhere who's got an ass whipping coming. Fortunately, the priest travels with a confessional. You know, it's different here in the state. We do have a clinic here, but it doesn't take that long because they give you a cup and a video of the greatest plays of the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, well, here's the thing. 
And I appreciate that. I appreciate the whole big red thing, but I went to medium blue. <laughs> and uh, we had teammates who would be like, damn it. And I'd be like, what's wrong? Kansas just scored. I'm like, we're playing, we're playing Wayne State. What do you have an ear thing in your helmet? You're like, oh, yeah, I'm listening to the Huskers. So, you know, we were known as a teacher's college, or if you want to be a jerk about it, suitcase college, which I didn't get because I didn't see any classes in travel, but apparently everyone went to school, and then on the weekends they drove to Lincoln to see the football team. It was like, hey, we got a pretty good football team. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, that, that wouldn't do much for me. All right. I needed another cup, and I was only through 94. <laughs> We won two more national championships after that. <laughs> hey, hey, coach, we were ranked, we, we were like ranked number five or something. We got up there, then we ran into Portland State. But other than that, we was doing great. All right, so how did you get hooked up? You were Snoop Dogg's bodyguard. Yes. Now that's yes. a book unto itself. Not as much as you would think. Really? He is boring. He is, Snoop Dogg is, is one boring. of the most boring human beings on the planet. I know everyone wants salacious stories. Most of our stories start with, hey, can you get me some Denny's, dog? Uh, and he'd give me a $100 bill. And I'd be like, how much Denny's do you want? <laughs> get everything. And he would food shop at 7-Eleven. So I eventually, if the WWE didn't call, I had to leave because I was a biscuit away from 500 pounds eating with him all the time because he has the metabolism of a, of a, of a ferret, and I do not. So he could just eat and eat and eat. But a lot of the stuff that happened with Snoop was the people around Snoop. And uh, I was always very outspoken. And on my book, I have the, a blurb from Snoop, and he talks about how I would always tell him the real, even when he didn't want to hear it. And that had a lot to do with spending time in Nebraska because we tend to tell it like it is. You might not always want to hear it. And we don't count crops until we see crops. So in California, he's surrounded by, they like to push things and practice things. And, and I was always very direct with him. And, um, and I'm a smart ass if you haven't figured it out yet. But uh, our biggest, our relationship became very close with his youth football league. And uh, Snoop spends a lot. People don't realize how much he donates to his community. And he funds an entire league, not a team, an entire league. And, uh, t and with, he also makes it to where parents of, of the children only pay 100 bucks or something like that, or scholarships, because football is very expensive. I don't have to tell anyone here who's got little ones playing football how much football can cost. Didn't he drive the bus himself? <laughs> yeah, like once. He can't pull a switch. I mean, the guy's high. You're going to let him drive your kids? I wouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been I mean, hard to I mean, push past the parents. Come on, man. I mean, he's got a guy in a joint in his mouth saying, hey, let me drive the kids a football game. Like, <laughs> that'd be so irresponsible. Like, no, here, no, bro. <laughs> kind of like it was in Pawnee City, huh, yeah. cable guy? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I was, I was yeah. watching his kids, and they had horrible footwork. The offensive line was not getting the respect it deserved. And uh, Coach Morris, after tormenting me for two and a half years over zone steps, I, I decided to pass the savings under the kids, and, uh, which was, as a bodyguard, I tried not to get too personal. But I was like, I said to the kids, and it's a lot of kids from the inner city, I would say, hey, you guys got to point your toes in and, and walk like John Wayne. And the kids like, who the hell John Wayne? I'm like, <laughs> you know what a penguin looks like? Walk like that. You know, so I had to put the toes in and make diamonds with their hands and stuff. So they were getting some Nebraska treatment. And uh, they just gave me, like, the kids that didn't really play that much. And we put hands on them in the scrimmage, and then Snoop was like, look, I don't need you to bodyguard during the day anymore. I need you to coach my kids. So um, and I was coaching his youth football team, and we won the championship that year. But um, it was a really good experience. But it was – I didn't realize till then how much the University of Nebraska and, and my coaching staff had – had put so much into me in work ethic. One of the things about coming from no father and like bouncing around from couch to couch when I was a kid and putting myself through high school, you don't really learn a lot of things about integrity and hard work. And that was the one thing about being an athlete in Nebraska that was different than anywhere else because you had to work, you were the first one out, especially us. Off the linemen, we were the first ones out, last ones to leave, and we always took care of each other. And that was something that has carried on to me for my entire career. And it carried on Snoop, and then they started changing the way they coached. They became teachers, and, and that still carries on today. And unfortunately, my career went in a different direction, but my favorite time with Snoop was coaching that and occasionally throwing some guys down some stairs in Russia and some <laughs> beating some guys up in, in England and, you know, things like that. But, I mean, that's, you don't want to hear those stories. 
Yeah, yeah, we really do, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah. yeah. We want to know who he threw down a flight of stairs, Tyrus. You know how many times you've grabbed a guy and thrown him down the stairs? You could probably, you know, oh, you got week. your sleeves cut off for a reason, bro. I mean, yeah, every week. <laughs> I'm, I'm busting chops every week. Yeah, Somebody sure. out a window. Yeah, yeah there's been uh, a few of those. See, now she was mean, though. She yeah. was <laughs> you're known now on the Gutfeld Show, but you were, you've been on seven different TV series yep. and a bunch of films, four or five films. How did your acting career get going? Well, it didn't start out swell. Uh, just so you know, Larry the Cable Guy is a big guy in Hollywood. He's a, he's a big guy. Uh, I can't even get half my body in the camera scene. So, and usually with guys my size, we have one role: die at the hands of a guy like him. Like, <laughs> like he just his, pointed at Bruce Rasmussen. By yeah, the way, yeah, it's always it's always a, a little guy who like catches your punch. You know, it's like and it beats you up and you beg for mercy. And it's like and it happens all the time in the real world. You know, us big guys getting slapped around by little tiny guys, but. <laughs> And those roles can be really frustrating, and, uh, but it's, you know, it, it is what it is. But I, I would always crack jokes to myself, and one time I was filming a movie called No One Lives, I kept cracking a joke, and the director was like, hey, why don't you, how many lines do you have? I was like, none. He's like, why don't you say some of that stuff while you're fighting him? But I'm losing the whole time. I don't really feel like I should be trash talking a guy while he's whooping me, so. <laughs> Although I've seen it, I don't, you know, but uh, he, and it just kind of grew from there, and then it just started spreading, and I started doing some stand, improv stand-ups where I just show up and just do my thing, and then a director was like, I started getting more movies, but they would ask me to do more things, improvs and stuff, and then it just kind of, it's like you get one, and then someone sees you, and you get another one, but I still get, like, auditions for, like, st weird stuff. But I clearly, like, they didn't even look at me. It's like I, they want me to audition for, like, a meek, small person and, like, real sensitive. A lot of love stories. And I'm like, bro, no one's, no one's watching that. I mean, it's just... Tyrus, Redford, you know, yeah, Tom just, Cruise. Yeah, it's just, it's not, you know, being a, a sex symbol is just something that I think you would agree with me. We just, I just don't have time for it. I just, it's not in our wheelhouse. No, you can't have it all. Yeah. I don't, don't want it hard all. It's being eye candy 24-7. It is. Yeah. Seven. I, I well, that said, nudity you know, clause is what got you, cable guy. It yeah. takes a lot out of you. <laughs> you know, it's like my wife all the time. I'm like, hey, eyes up. Like, hey, have some respect. And she's like, I have no choice. You're freaking Shrek. So. <laughs> That's how I know that my wife loves me. Because yeah. you marry somebody that's gorgeous and just as sweet as can be. You think it all, she's only marrying you. So I know my wife loves me. And this is probably why your wife loves you, because they married us looking like this. Yeah. Yeah. And the good thing about marrying guys like us, as the years go by, there ain't a lot of drop off from now. All right? So, <laughs> right? It's kind of like buying a Kia. Sure, it's a Kia, but it ain't gonna get any worse. You know, that's it. That's how yeah. we know they're. Yeah, uh, no, I'm no, I refuse to believe that. I, <laughs> I tell her all the time, "You're gonna walk away from this," and then she just closes the door. Like, <laughs> so. <laughs> what are you What are you doing now, cable guy? You know, after you know, after you got rich on cars, you know, you, you haven't exactly been gracing that silver screen like you once did. What are you up to? Well, in all honesty, look, I've been doing this almost forty years, yeah. thirty six years, and I literally was on the road two hundred and eighty seven days a year for seventeen straight years, and I lived in the tour bus. So I told my wife when I hit fifty. I'm gonna slow down. I don't want to be on the road. I don't. My Foxworthy really is great. He's like my adopted brother. And he said, "Man, if you don't need to go somewhere, don't go. You know, if your kids got something going on, why are you flying to Cedar Rapids to do a show when you don't have to go?" He goes, "Do not miss your kids growing up if you can do it." And so I told my wife, when I hit 50, I said, honey, I think I'm done. I think I want to do about 20 to 25 shows a year. And I want to hang out with my family. I want to play some golf. And I just want to watch my kids grow up. I, they're going to be out of about the house. About that. You know? So that's, that's what I'm doing. I, 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 it, it's, it, you know, now I can, now I go out and uh, like casinos. I love working casinos. 
casinos got great golf courses <laughs> and uh, we'll take a couple of buddies and we'll fly out and we'll play golf i'll do a show and we'll fly back out to the next place we'll play golf i'll do a show and we'll come home and that's it yeah. but you know i worked people go well boy he came out of, but that took a lot of work i mean you know for the first six seven years of stand-up you're driving from town to town and performing for 25 people, 50 people, a biker bar here and, a, you know, and I, I got popular at calling radio stations. So I would call radio stations. I got about 27 radio stations that I was syndicated on. And I got up every morning after doing a, I mean, I wouldn't go to bed till 3 o'clock. I'd wake up at 5.30. The most I would do in a day is like 14. And I would just go in a room and I would call radio stations. They each got a three and a half minutes. And I did that every day, five days a week for 13 years. On top of doing stand-up and going in as a sidekick. And I'm not saying that just to say that, oh, wow, he's... Listen, it takes a lot of work to be able to get to a position, finally, where you're like the CEO of your company, where you can actually lay back a little bit, but... Um, so yeah, I've been very blessed, very fortunate, but man, I'm, I'm, I never leave the house. I don't go anywhere. I go golf, I go home. If my kids got something to do, I go do what they're doing and I go home. I hardly ever go anywhere. I like being home because I've lived, I've been gone so long, you know, but I definitely didn't want to miss my kids growing up. So that's what I do. I'm just kind of hanging out and. And enjoying life, you know. <laughs> you see all the old blue collar comedy tour guys much? I've never liked them. Never liked them? Uh, <laughs> <they're>, uh... <laughs> no, you know, um, uh, I do. Je Jeff's like one of my all time best friends. He's like my brother. I see him all the time. I talk to him almost every day. Um, before we did blue collar, I didn't even know who Bill Engvall was. I met him, I'm like the Ringo Starr of Blue Collar. They had done eight Blue Collars without me, with somebody else, but he wasn't working out. And so Jeff had never seen me do this Larry the Cable Guy character, so he wanted everybody to see it uh, and see what they thought of it. And then I, that's how I got it. But I, don't, I met Bill that night. Ron White I met a couple of times. He was nice, but I didn't know him. That night I auditioned for the thing, the first night I met him. But Jeff, I've known Jeff since 1986. We used to go to Atlanta Braves spring training games all the time in West Palm Beach, and we're huge Braves fans. And I remember when the Braves, first time they ever won the division in 91, I called Jeff up, I started crying. I'm like, Jeff, I can't believe it. Can you believe we just won? And I'm thinking he's gonna think I'm the biggest freaking pansy. And he goes, I know, I can't believe it. Is. <laughs> He's crying worse than I am. We literally wept when the Braves finally won the division. <laughs> so those, they're four great guys. Uh, Bill and Ron said they're done. They're retiring mm. at the end of this year. I don't know why you would announce you're retiring. Just don't do it. <laughs> and that way, if somebody wants you to do something, you go, yeah, why not? I'll do it, you know? But you know how that goes. Alabama's retired 47 times, you know. Yeah. George Strait retired a couple years ago. He's back at it. So, you're on the other hand, Tyrus. You're rolling. I mean, you're you've got stuff every day all over the country. This is going to wear you out eventually, isn't it? Or yeah, uh, apparently they don't want me at home. They pack for me to go. So, uh, <laughs> no, I. <laughs> it's easier for him though. He's barren. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're barren, your schedule loosens up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> No, it's uh, no. I, I agree with you, man. Being on the road is, is tough. WWE. I was on the road 300 days a year, and then uh, got failed with, and I still wrestle for NWA because I'm not ready to be an adult yet. And um, <laughs> and then with TV and stuff, uh, the the biggest thing I had to learn how to say, and I think uh, you echoed that, is you got to learn to say no. And for a long time, I wasn't able to say no, and it it hurt a lot of personal relationships because I had to work. I'm a worker, I have to work, and that was always my excuse for stuff. And then you miss things a lot for a paycheck, and at the end of the day, that paycheck is gonna be gone after you pay bills and stuff, and the, the hurt from you not showing up uh, will be around for a long time. So I, I struggle with that a lot, but um, my kids are, are getting older now, and they're getting more independent, 
you know. So when I fly in to see him, we have great days, uh, and I do my travel around visits. Like I like I'll be here tomorrow, then I'll fly back to work, and then Saturday I got NWA, and then Sunday me me and my son and my daughter were going to Top Golf and all that stuff. Dave and Buster's, and it, it, the only thing that's terrible is I get there and I when they were younger, we would do everything together, you know, like we. Dad, come play video games with us. And Dad, watch this and that. Now they're like, uh, yeah, stay over there, Dad. I'll be, you know, and I'm, I'm the one struggling with that. I was like, no, hey, I'll play Mario Kart with you. Dad, no one plays Mario Karts anymore. <laughs> like, but I do. Like, <laughs> and I'll be right here. You guys, you know, I'll, yeah, yeah. And they're doing like dance stuff and being woke and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, no, I, I'll just be here. All right, so tell us about Gutfeld. He's got the number one rated television show in his time slot. Beats The Tonight Show, beats Colbert, beats everybody. Yeah, we, yes, we Tell do. me about this guy. So, uh, oh, you, you guys, Nebraskans are going to love this. Uh, <laughs> we met on the internet. <laughs> and, and just to be clear, it wasn't Tinder or anything like that. But uh, he did a show, Red Eye, which uh, you were on. Yeah. And... Um, he had just become doing Gutfeld, and uh, I, was, I was doing some kind of campaign for the WWE. It was like 365 to Redemption or whatever. It didn't work. But, um, and I had just got let go, and somebody had said something about him, and I just wrote like a – I like picking on trolls. So uh, I said something, and, and Gutfeld thought it was funny, and, and then he DM'd me or what is it, message? Is there anyone here under 20 that could help me out? And um, – he sent me a message on Twitter, and it was like, hey, man, that was really funny. And, uh, you know, I was looking you up. Do you do comedy? And I was like, yeah. And uh, he was like, hey, I'd love to have you on my show. I'm like, right. <laughs> Let me get this straight. A uh, political talk show, you want to have a black wrestler on. Yeah, this is going to go over real well. And what was your network again? Fox News? Yeah, bruh. No. I'm, and, and hell no. Like, I got too much. No, not happening. And uh, then he wrote me again. He's like, oh, it'll be fun. It'll just be great. And then I started thinking, okay. Because you in the entertainment, you know there's some weirdos out there. Yeah. So now I'm thinking there's this little white man in New York that wants to have a wrestler come over and beat him up or something. So, <laughs> so you know, like, when I ask him what I need for the show, he'll be like, singlet, baby oil, or red ball, you know. And I, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to hear it, you know. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm going to have my people uh, call you with travel arrangements. I'm like, yeah, you do that. Yeah, you have your people. And... Uh, <laughs> His people, Joan, uh, his producer, called me up and said, we'd like to fly you out for a show. And I was like, oh, maybe this guy's true. But my guard was up because I was like, typically, there was a, not now, wrestling, wrestlers, we've kind of changed the game with uh, Cena's success and Rock's success and Batista's success. And I guess I got to throw my name in there. But before that, wrestlers were looked at in the entertainment world just a scotch above a porn star. (laughs) And they got the word star. We didn't. <laughs> We're just a wrestler. So wasn't a whole lot of calls from Hollywood for wrestlers, right? So I, I was expecting him to try to show that I was dumb or, you know, silly or stupid. But he didn't. He asked me a couple questions. I made some jokes. In the, in the first commercial, he leaned over and he goes, hey, if you lived in New York, I'd, I'd make you a, a co-host. And I said, well, if you lived in Tampa, I'd make you my manager. So there we go. <laughs> uh, I said, I'm not, you know, I'm, that's like a real fancy way of saying not bringing you back. Like, you know, they put some ridiculous, in, hey, if you lived on top of a mountain, I'd give you money. Well, I don't. So uh, I said, uh, man, I'm not moving to New York, bro. You know, and he was like, uh, what about once a month? I was like, sure, still being really skeptical. And then uh, I was doing once a month in between my wrestling gigs and stuff. And uh, I came and then finally he brought me in for episode and he, uh, I saw on the rundown, it was, they wanted to talk about police brutality. And that was tough. I, I didn't really know what I wanted to say about it because I had been on both sides of that, that fence. I had been on the wrong end of a bad apple, and I had also been helped out, and I had friends who were who probably wore the shield. So this was tough for me, and I was still at that time worried about what media thinks of you, and because I'm trying to be an actor, I'm trying to get jobs, and I'm thinking, well, if I say the wrong thing, I'm going to get canceled, and if I support the police, then I'm an Uncle Tom. So it was like all these issues that you deal with and I almost said, almost made the biggest mistake in my life where I said, nah, I'll just come back when it's a lighter subject thing. I'm just here to crack jokes. I'm not here to get, talk politics. And um, I said, I just sat down and I said, you know what? I'm just going to tell like I see it and be damned. You know, whatever happens, happens. And I went on this thing. He asked me the question. 
I went into my spiel and it basically came down to compliance. And when you're resisting arrest, you're not Rosa Parks, you're a criminal. And that statement changed the game. And it went, it was the biggest Vi viral, is anyone here 18? Viral, yeah, viral uh, thing on YouTube and Fox News was getting blown up with it and they're like, who is this guy and this, that, whatever, but the response was, yes, you can actually have two thoughts on something and that's kind of my role on Gutfeld. Like, I'm a Republican, but I'm a dad first and I'm, I'm worried about me and mine first. When I vote, I don't vote for the, for the elephant, I vote for me and if I don't like something, I'm gonna speak on it. So, um, that moment, uh, God feels like, I need you here every week. And I was like, I'm not moving to New York. He's like, we're not asking you to. Just, can you give me every Saturday? And he's like, uh, how much are you making right now as an actor and a, and a wrestler? What? He's like, <laughs> how much are you making as what? Is it 100,000? Uh, what, 150,000? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, like that. uh, that's exactly how it happened. He said, so uh, we'll call it 151. Fuck <laughs> so, Briz. <laughs> and I remember walking out of there go, the fools went for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and the next thing you know, I'm there every night. So, you know, and things are going great. And then he want to mess around and go five days a week. And I was like, no, nah, I can't, man, because it's like what Larry talked about. I got to, I, had, I started doing less wrestling and, and acting stuff because I wanted to be at home. So, and he's like, well, we're going five days a week. I'm like, congratulations. I'll see you on Fridays. <laughs> he's like, but I really need you. I said, well, sorry, Briz. I work one day a week, non-negotiable. And um, then he said, well, what would it take to be out, get you out here two days? <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> or how about three days? Not happening. You know, and uh, he was like, four days. I'm like, you keep going up, and I'm telling you no every time you're going up. The answer, it's not going to be yes. I'm not moving, I'm not being in New York that much. Can't stand it. And uh, they made me an offer that my wife couldn't refuse. So. <laughs> The old saying, there is an amount of money. Yeah, well, not, what, uh, the cold part was, is I was like, it's about family and spending time together. And uh, my seven-year-old, who was the exact spitting image of me, she was like, you big dummy, you do it for four years and you could just be home all the time. We don't even like playing with you anymore, go. <laughs> <laughs> like, mommy and I want to go shopping, go, go, yeah, be funny, yeah, whatever, Tyrus, <laughs> whatever. And uh, so I was like, you guys cool with it? And they're like, yeah, we're fine, go. So uh, I said, uh, fine, and then um, did negotiations or whatever, and then so That's great. there you have it. Okay, everybody wants to know, what is the origin of Gitter Done? Well, when I was a kid, uh, my grandpa would take water to the cattle, and he'd always say, let's get to getting. He'd say, here we go to Mexico, and he'd say, get her done. We're getting her done. Well, we got her done, you know, that kind of thing. You know, just one day on the radio, I was, still, I was just, you know, doing characters for a radio station, and I did Larry for the first time. I called up, you know, I'm like, hey, y'all want that hooked up here? You want that hooked up over here? You know, it was just, and uh, so when I got done, the whole thing, they go, well, can you call tomorrow? I go, yeah, I'll call you tomorrow then. All right, let get her done. <laughs> they go, get her done. What's that mean? I go, Hell, I don't know, whatever you gotta do, though, just get her done. <laughs> and I said it every time I signed off, and it just got to be this crazy, I'll tell you a crazy story. I was doing it, I was living in West Palm Beach, calling a radio station in Tampa, and um, I just got syndicated into Orlando about two months before, and I'm at a Peaches Records and Tapes. Remember back in the day? Uh, Peaches records and tapes, and I walk in there, and uh, that's like that's why I got that bit where I'm like I like asked the guy true story. I said, "Where's the Ario Speedwagon?" Yeah. They got a thing. He goes, "Ario Speedwagon, you still listen to that shit?" Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, you still making minimum wage? Go get it." <laughs> you know. Oh, oh, I was so mad at that guy. You know, Ario Speedway, the greatest rock and roll band of all time. Hey, I knocked you in the face. You know, jerk. Anyway. 
<laughs> so, so I'm walking out of the store, and there's a guy leaving the store. It's a true story. And I hear him go, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. Get her done. He goes, get her done. And I go, what the? I go up to the guy working there. True story. I go, what did you just say? He said, what? I said, when he left, he says, oh, get her done. I go, yeah, get her done. He goes, yeah, a guy on a radio station says, he's hilarious, Larry the Cable Guy is on the 95 YNF, and they just got syndicated into this station in Orlando. And I go, I know, that's me. He goes, shut up. I go, no, that's me, the get her done, that's me. He goes, let me hear you say it. I went, get her done. And he goes, nope, not even close. That's real. <laughs> so right after that, I went outside, called my manager, and said, we got to get this thing copyrighted. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's when I started doing T-shirts and hats so I could get it copyrighted. <laughs> right, whatever. You still got those hats and T-shirts in the garage? <laughs> you you know what? I have the very first Get It Done T-shirt I ever made. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, it's made out of gingerbread. Uh -huh. It's unbelievable. Made out of gingerbread. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Uh, other than Jim Pillen, who do you admire most in this world? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I do love me some Jimmy Pillen. Yeah. Well, you're both, you know, come from the hog business, and there's that simpatico and all that good stuff. He's, yeah, right? But I'm not lying. When he recovered that fumble in 78, yeah. yeah. If I was in the area, I would have French kissed him in two <laughs> seconds. That was one of the greatest days of my life. Oh, God. Finally beating those scumbags from Oklahoma. Yeah. Then what he did to Alabama, what, three interceptions yeah. against Bear Bryant? Absolutely. So he was your hero. I mean, if you can intercept Bear Bryant, recover a daggum fumble from Barry Switzer's team, and raise pigs, yeah. you can run a state. Yep. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right, so other than... Well, look, I don't want to... No. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead. Hey, so other than Jim, you know, who do you admire? You know, family aside, like your mom and dad, obviously. But, you who know, do I admire? Who do you admire the most? I mean, who, who really inspires you or who do you admire as a person? Man, a lot of people. I mean, people. there's. I take so much away from all kinds of people. You know, I like people. I don't hate anybody. I like people. So I just, I take stuff away from everybody. I mean, if you're going to go just locally, like what we're doing here with the football program mm -hmm. and everything, I admire Coach. You know, I admire Coach, everything he stood for, how he handled the kids, how he handled, handled just being who he was and, and uh, you know, he came over and spoke a couple times to the kids at my home school and just taught them some really good principles. And so I've always admired him. And, and uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know, name somebody, I'll tell you if I admire him or not. Okay. I don't know, I can't. <laughs> and we'll do that. me on the spot. I got, yeah, I mean, we'll... you know, I just, I pull so many things out of, I see so many, things and people that I admire about them. I mean, I don't know. It's cool. What about you, Tyrus? Anybody in particular? Um, I had heroes growing up, you know, uh, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, Lou Ferrigno, Robert Parrish. Oh, yeah, right. Lou Ferrigno. I'll Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. yeah. He's, he's on this docket next year. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, like how he turned green. And yeah, that no, he, I yeah. thought that was very admirable how cool. he could do that. And then he was nice about it at the end, he's you know. Nice. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, and I tried, to, <laughs> I tried to mirror my life like that. Absolutely. But uh, who I admire, honestly, it's, it's fans. Because for me, wrestling fans were one thing. And even comedy fans or movie fans or football fans are different. But uh, when I started doing... Uh, political comedy or what messaging or whatever you want to call it uh, I was shocked I mean just shocked I couldn't believe it of how many old white women would run up to me and hug me for the first time in my life because usually they would go the other way <laughs> <laughs> my big ass come walking up in the supermarket they'd be like you see the size and they would just take off and they'd lock their car doors even if they're not in the car you hear the little clicks so <laughs> That ever happened to you, cable guy? <laughs> they come up, running up to you, and give you a big hug. Old white women. Old white women, yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, but and it wasn't just it wasn't just like a fan thing. Like they generally cared about me. Like uh, they asked me how I was doing, or they would criticize my grocery basket. You know and. <laughs> You know, things like that, but I was like just really impressed that, like, because you get so caught up in certain things. And I know that I, for a lot of my career, uh, everything with me is about maintaining my blackness. You know, I had to, you know, when we're different, you know, and even your comedy is different, but it's really in the, it's really not. People love you for who you are. They don't really, they really don't give a damn what color you are or how big you are when you're, when they like who you are. And so they're going to run up to you if they care Absolutely. about you. They're not going to be like, while they're hugging me going, ooh, I got some black on me. They don't do that. So. <laughs> hey, he's right. Here's what, this is, a, he's exactly right. Here's what we learned. Going out and doing shows and meeting people. It seems to me the only people that are concerned about color is everybody in the media. Mm-hmm. No, because when you go out, when you go out amongst everybody else, nobody cares. Nobody cares. They don't care. It's unbelievable. Then you turn on the TV, you would think we were supposed to hate each other. Yeah, I'm like, are you going Larry the Cable Guy? No. Absolutely. Don't get me started. This is supposed to be a fun night. Yeah. But, you know, but I, I continue to be, even tonight, where is that nice lady who kept throwing up the wind sign? Where is she? Where is she at? I forgot her name. No, you, you did other stuff. No. The, uh, she's a little... <laughs> there, there she is, a little striped stand-up, ma. Uh, she, yeah. she came up to me and threw up the W, and I was like, look at you. And then hugged me and talked to me, and I was like, that type of uh, uh, well, attention and you know, it's genuine it's like they say I love you but they really they really do and when I am who I am on TV if you ain't figured it out by now I, no one can maintain this act or want to <laughs> but that type of just I don't even know how to, the word for admiration or because it, it's humbling you know and it, it, it affects me a lot when I go on TV now I never thought that people I didn't know in different walks of life would affect me so much and how I think, how I entertain, how I deal with my own kids. It's it, when you turn the TV off and you don't listen to the noise, we're really in a good place in this country. Just we really care off, about each don't other. Don't turn off your show. No, no, no don't <laughs> turn off mine. All TV's off except from 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central. But the, the point is, is just that when, when you don't look at the stuff, People care about people, and that's the one thing. That's one thing you really know, in, in, especially in Nebraska. No one cared about They just cared if you were honest and had integrity. That and your character. That meant more. They didn't care if you was the color of a baboon's ass, they as long as you were a decent no. person. Nobody, you know? That's true. Nobody cares. All the times that we go out and do stuff, it's, you know, yeah. there's 90... Percent of the people out there are getting along and enjoying life and being friendly to each other, and it's so annoying when you every time you turn on the TV they pit you against one another. It is such <laughs> horse crap, and you know, like I used to catch a bunch of crap, Larry the Cable Guy, blah blah blah. I remember when I was doing Only in America or the History Channel, um, the guy that was my producer was from Philadelphia. And he came up to me and he goes, you know, I didn't know if I was going to take this gig or not because, you know, all these people on the internet say that you're this and that and I didn't want to hear this. And he goes, you're literally nothing like I've ever read about you from anybody. He goes, everywhere we go, it doesn't matter who they are. They, it, it mean, he goes, it's so infuriating. I didn't take, almost didn't take this gig because of the stuff I read about, re people writing about you. And it's so annoying. It's like when I was doing the History Channel, uh, I went and played basketball at Rucker Park in Harlem, <laughs> right? And everybody's like going, you're going to Rucker, Larry the Cape? Well, yeah, why not, right? And you dress for it. Yeah, right? And I, and I went down there. Dude, it was the greatest experience of my life. And there's and people walking by going, hey, Larry the Cable Guy. Yep. You know, I'm signing autographs and taking pictures. And I mean, it was awesome. So, you know, all of that, all that new stuff, I mean, it, it gets so annoying because... There's a lot of us to get along and... There's more of us, more... Yeah, there's jerks and there's idiots, and especially on social media because there's no consequences, but they're always outnumbered. 
they're always outnumbered. There might be one person in this crowd tonight that'd be like, oh, that big guy, why is he on stage? I don't know why he's here. He can't say it out loud. I mean, he could try, but there'd be a special award in his memory next year. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fellas, this would be fun all night, but we probably better get to some business. These two guys yeah. have offered a couple of really special experiences that they're willing to auction off tonight. And Tyrus, let's talk about yours first. Two days, one night in New York City, hanging yep. out with Tyrus. Tell everybody uh, what you're, what you're going to do for us. Separate okay. rooms. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... The little handsy one over there. So, yeah. so, you, uh, so uh, we've got, uh, actually, this coming Monday, the Gutfeld Show goes back to uh, live audience. And we got a new studio, and it holds uh, almost 100 seats. And it's like a movie theater, and it's state-of-the-art, and it's cool. So you would do two shows, and then you would be my guest on my podcast. I got two of them. I got Tyrus and Tim, and then this new one that my uh, offensive line coach is obsessed with. Uh, it's called Three Wise Men, with a question mark. Uh, <laughs> And uh, you would be the guest on that with me and, and go over some stories and see if you can, well, you're not going to take my job because I mess you up, but, right. you know, see, just kind of get the whole experience. Be cool. Yeah. So it's two days. It's uh, two days and a night in New York City, taking the Gutfeld show with Tyrus as a special guest, going to get a Vatican tour of Fox News yep. and be on the podcast, hang with Tyrus for a couple days. So Cam, why don't you come on up? Cam Hartstack, come on up and let's see if we can't. Hey, Make Brett, a do dream we have that book true too? To some really fun Nebraskans. Oh, here. you know what? And I'm going to add one more to it. I have an autographed, signed copy of my book. Brand new book, that, bestseller. Yeah, it's right there. New that, York Times bestseller. So you you get to take that home with you tonight, provided yeah. that your credit card That's clears. That's the deposit on it. So what we'll do is work out. Um, we will work out the dates that work for you and for Tyrus. Where's Cam? Here comes Cam. All right, Cam. Oh, so no let's pressure. do this. Here you go, Cam. So this is the cable the guy. I'll give you this one. Cable guy experience in New York City. So we got to sit up here and watch this and get bid on. All righty. On the, on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity chance to go to New York. Who would here? I'm going to get a new, what, 5,000. Hit five. Here to the bid on 5,000. I'm going to hit it on five. Took it here. 6,000. Hit five. Final the bid on 5,500. Money's on. I've got $5,000 bid. 55. Now 6,000. I'm going to 6,000. Here to the bid on 6,000. I'm going to 55. Here to the bid on 6,000. dollars Hit 50. Final the bid on 6,000. 65. Hit 65. Final the bid on 65. Now 65. Final the bid on 65. I'm 6,000 right over here. Got to be 65. Now 7,000. 75. It's 75. Final the bid on 8,000. 8,000. 75. 8,000. Hit 75. 8,000. I'm going to 8,000 here to the bit of 75, 8,000 here to the bit of 8,000, 75 here. Austin, I've got 75 over here, got to be 8,000. Hit 75, 80, 85, 85 to 9. Now, now to the bit of 9,000, 85 with 75, and now 9,000, and now 95 to the bit of 9,500, and 95 to the bit of 9,500 here to the bit of 9,500 dollars, and 9,000, 95. What do you want to do, Austin? Yep, 9,000, 9,500. Hit 95, the bit of 9,500. Here to the bit of 9,500. Hit 9,000, 95. Anybody else want to play? 95, 10,000. Austin, new fire. Hit 10, we're all out over here. I got 95. Got to be 10,000. Hit 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 
382. 382. Great. Two trips, 18,000 apiece. Thanks, Tyrus. All right. Hang on, right? Boy. Okay, cable guy. That's. That's well, that, that's, that's like. like what, are you gonna, what are you gonna do here, cable guy? I mean, that's unbelievable. That, was it thirty-six thousand dollars? Thirty-six thousand dollars, yeah. Yeah, but that's. I mean, you know, he lives in New York. <laughs> no, he doesn't live in New York. Right. That's the thing. I got some. Yeah, it'll be. Okay. All right, what are you gonna do? I have a second book in my hotel room. I'll give it to so Brett. Now we gotta sell the book. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, we gotta sell the book. <laughs> All right, this is to go with me fishing in Burchard Lake. <laughs> we start this at twenty thousand damn dollars. Well, we start this out for it. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> All right. Well, let me do this. <sighs> what an asshole. Uh, no, that's all, that's all, that's a good call. I wish I lived somewhere fancy, and I'm almost <laughs> out of shows. Can I do something? I'll do three things, but can one of them be for next year? 2023? Can one be for 2023? Yep. Yep. All right. You and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many I can take. We'll go golfing with Donald Trump <laughs> at his course, I think February. Yeah, in February. I'm bullshitting you. All right, listen. All right, listen. So sorry. I should have went first, all right? I mean, how do you top $36,000? Donald Trump at a golf course would do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Probably right. Probably right. Well, I just don't know where the show will be. Here's what I'll do, though. Because I'm done. I'm, I'm, unless I, ha I get one later in the year, because I've done almost all my 20 something shows already. How about if I do this? I'll auction off. How many people did you take to New York? <laughs> Why don't you do a oh, trip that you take them to New York with you to do a podcast with me? Why don't you do that? <laughs> okay, twos. Two people, right? All right. You can go with me. I hope you like golf. <laughs> but you'll... We'll go to one of my... You, okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, if I get this before the end here, if something else comes back late notice, we'll go then. But we'll, we'll go on the jet, and you'll go fly with me. We'll fly to my show. We'll golf that, at, we'll, we'll golf that day. I'll do my show that night. You got, they can just tag along with me, and we'll have a good time. We'll fly out. We'll fly out. Actually, it might be a two-nighter. So we'll fly out on Friday. I'll do my show with you with me. Then we'll fly out, stay in the hotel. The next day we'll golf all day. Then I'll do my show. We'll come back to Lincoln. Sound good? All right. All right. That good? All right. All right, that's good. And, and we'll do it all with Ron DeSantis. How's that sound? Everybody went? All right. No, okay. I'm only kidding. All right, so we'll do that, and then let, you want to do that first, auction that off first? Because it probably won't happen, but let's auction that first, I know. If it, if it doesn't happen at the end of the year, we'll do it first of next year, sound good? I promise, it'll be fun. All right, so this is the trip, two people with me will fly out, and it could either be two nights or one night. Because I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be fun, I know that much. It will be a good time. So, uh, started off something, 40 grand. 40,000. <laughs> How are you going to do it here? Once in a lifetime opportunity. Who is? 
good. Who'd give 5,000? Get 5, part of the minute 5,000 here now. Take it here. 7,500. 75. Get 10,000. Get 10. 10 to the minute 10 to the minute 10 to the minute 10,000. 75. How about 8? Now 9. Now 9 to the minute 9 to the minute 9,000. Now 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10,000. Get 10. Now 11,000. 11,000. 10 here. 11 and 12. Get 12 on the minute 10 to the minute 11 here to the minute 12. You got to give it 12,000. Now 13. 13,000. 13. You said 13. 14. Get 14,000. Get 14 on the minute 10 to the minute 14,000. 14. 15. 16. I'm at 16, 16, 16, 16. I'm at 15 here. Gonna be 16. It's 16,000. It's 16,000. 16,000. 15 here. Gonna be 16,000. It's 16. Another 16,000. It's 15, 16. I'm 15 here. Another 16,000. It's 16,000. 15 here. Gonna be 16,000. It's 16. Another 15. 15 here. Another 16. Don't worry. The plane it will be out of the shop by then too. So it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have some good times on it. I'm bid 15. I'm asking 16,000. Get 15 here to the minute and 16,000. 15 here to the minute and 16, 16, 16, 15, 16. Get 15 here. 16, 17. It's 17, 17 to the minute and 17,000. 17 to the minute and 17, 18. 18,000, 18 to the minute and 17, 18. It's 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 17, 18. It's 17, 18,000 here to the minute and 17, here to the minute 18. 18,000. How about 17,005? 17,000. Part of the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute and 17,005. 17,005. You want back in? It's 17,000. Part of the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute and 17,005. 17,000. Part of the minute and part of the minute and 17,005. 17,005. What do you want to do? 17,005. 18. 18,000. 18,000. 18. 18. 18. 18. 5. 18. 5. 18. Part of the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute. 18,000. 5. 18,000. Part of the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute. 18,000. 5. 18,000. 5. I'm bid 18,000 up front. 18,000. 5. Anybody else? 18,000. Now 19. 19. 19. 19,000. 19. Another minute, nineteen thousand. Then nineteen five, nineteen five, nineteen five. Hung part of the minute, part of the minute, nineteen thousand five. Twenty thousand dollars. It twenty twenty twenty. Now new fire. Twenty one. It twenty one. The minute, one of the minute, twenty one. It twenty one. The minute, one of the minute, twenty one thousand. Twenty one. The minute, twenty one thousand. Twenty two. Twenty two and three. It twenty three. The minute, 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 three. Twenty three thousand. Twenty three thousand. Twenty two. Twenty three. Twenty two. Twenty. I'm I'm in the back for twenty two. I'm asking twenty three thousand. Twenty three thousand. Twenty two. Twenty three. 22, 23 to the minute and 3 to the minute and 3 to the minute and 22, 23. Anybody else? 22, 23, 22 in the back. Got to be 23,000. 23,000. 23 to the minute and 3 to the minute and 23,000. 22 and 23. 22. How about 22, 5? Now 23 and 4. Now 4. Now 4. Now 4 and 4 and 4 to the minute and 24,000. 23 and 4 and 4 and 4 and 4. Do you want back in? 24,000. I'm at 23 off the left. I'm asking 24,000. Hit 24 to the minute and 23, 5. Hit 23, 5. 23, 5. I'm part of the minute and part of the minute and 23, 5. 23. 5, you want back in? 23, 5, we're both out. 23, 5, 23, 5, I'm 23,000 over here. 23,000, 5, 23,000, 5, all in, all done. 23,000, 5. You got anything else to add? Who's getting it? Over here to the left. She's got $23,000. I'm asking 23,500. Okay, he doesn't look like 23, 5, now 24. Okay. That's, that's fine. Now 24. Just make sure now 24. I'm not getting into some kind of weirdo over here or something. <laughs> I've got 23,005. I'm asking 24,000. 24 in the minute. You've been with me the whole time. Get 24,000. 20, oh, thank you for what you did do. 23,005, 24. Anybody else? 23,005 here to the minute and 24. 24 and more and more and more and more. 24,000. 23,005 here to the minute and four. No, now 24, 5. 24, 5. 24, part of the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute and 24, 5. 24, 5. 24, 5. 24, 5. 24, the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute and 24, 5. 24, 5. 24,000 straight away. 24, 5. I'm part of the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute and 24, 5. 24, 5. 24, 5. 20. You can't just buy these trips on Expedia here. 24, 5. 24, 5. This is not a Travelocity deal here. 24, 5. 24, 5. 24, 5. I'm part of the minute and part of the minute and part of the minute and 24, 5. 24, 5. 24, 5. 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, that Southwest gives us window seats. Okay. <laughs> 25,000. You're not going to be flying spirit. You, you're going to get lunch here. 25,000. 25,000. Did you hear the joke about the other day they had an emergency on a, a Spirit Airline? They said, is there a doctor on board? You think a doctor's flying spirit? <laughs> 25, 24, 5, 5, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 24, 25. You want back in at 25,000? I've got 24,000 five bid over here. Got to be 25,000. Get 25,000 in the minute and part of the minute and 25. Anybody else? 25,000. I see you thinking about it. Get 25,000. 
Get 25, one more time. 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, you want back in at twenty-five five? Sold the trip twenty-five thousand oh, dollars. Oh man, look at this! God bless you. Buyer one twenty. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank oh, you. one one eight. This is going to a good cause. That's awesome. Thank you. I may not make it to that show, but thank yep, you so much. So it'll be a good show anyway. My opening act's fantastic. You want me to do the medical? That buyer number was 118. We got one more deal. Oh, hold on. What? Oh, Tyrus. Hold on. <laughs> Jungle fever's a bitch. <laughs> Yeah. You spend right. 25000 you can say anything you want. <laughs> I'll do one more fun one. I do this at my tournament, so this is kind of cool. Um, if you got a son or daughter, nephew, or somebody that's a big Cars fan that likes Mater, I will auction off a birthday call for Ma from Mater to whoever it is. So and it's their birthday, just let me know. And I'll call him up, and I go, hey, happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> you know, so that's good. And that's, they're always fun to do, uh, 50 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told my daughter I was meeting Larry the Cable Guy tonight. She goes, oh, cool. I said, no, tow mater. I think she thinks I'm looking at a tow truck right now. <laughs> All right, on the birthday call, who would give a thousand dollars? Here to the minute of thousand, here to the minute of two. I'm minute of thousand, five hundred. I'm minute of five hundred, five hundred, five hundred. It five hundred, five hundred, five hundred, five hundred. Took it here a thousand. It five here to the minute of thousand dollars. I'm minute of five here to the minute of one thousand. It five seven fifty. It five here to the minute of seven hundred. Here to the minute of half. Seven hundred and here to the minute of half. Seven hundred and seven here to the minute of half. Seven hundred and fifty. Seven fifty. Give a thousand. Seven fifty up front. Got to be one thousand. It one 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 thousand. It one the minute of one the minute of one the minute of seven fifty here to the minute of one. Seven fifty here to the minute of one the minute of one the minute of one thousand dollars. Seven fifty here to the minute of one. Anybody else? Seven fifty here to the minute of one. It one and one and one one thousand seven fifty here to the minute of one. Seven fifty one. Sold it your way. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. Buyer two eight five. Hey, how about a round for Cam? I mean, that was big league. Cam Hartstock. Thanks, buddy boy. Guys, this was fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyrus and Larry the Cable Guy. We got her done. We got her done. You too. Got her done. Great to see you. Guys. The Nebraska Greats Foundation is a blessed organization. All of you and these two guys right here, big league. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, it, honestly, thank you so much for having us. I mean, it's always fun to do these, but man, when you see guys talking on the film, man, if that don't break you up, I mean, I already got to cry at everything. That's flipping off. The fact all this is helping them, God bless you, man. It's awesome. Thank all you right. for having us. I, I, Thanks, I just, guys. I want to say thank you, too. I want to thank you so much um, in a week that has been one of the biggest weeks of my career to be here back where it all started for me. It's truly humbling. I want to thank Coach Morris so much for being here tonight. It means the world to me. And uh, thank you guys very much. Okay. Oh, what, real, real oh, yeah. quick. Yeah. Uh, to those two groups that did those bids, you can do plus one. So <laughs> there's three of you, so we'll throw you swords and you figure it out. <laughs> all right. A couple more things before we get to Zach Miller. We're so pleased to have all of our recipients here tonight. You've met Jeremy. You've met, you know, Gerald. Um, 
hopefully you've had a chance to see Jim Unger too. We're also joined by Jonathan Hayes and Bernard Day and Dennis Stahlnecker and Jose Calderon and Christoph Mangi of York College. We're so proud of all of you. But there is one, there is one that has managed to steal our hearts. And she's about to steal yours too. Tesla Oldfield was a two-sport athlete at Peru State, softball and cross country. Through hard work, dedication, she made her dream come true of being a college athlete. About four years ago, we got a call from Tesla who said that she needed some help. She'd gotten sick, her insurance covered most of what she needed, except equipment. She asked for a special bed so that she could sleep with her husband. She'd been diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. You might know it as Lou Gehrig's disease. ALS is a progressive nervous system disease that affects nerve cells in the spinal cord, causing a loss of muscle control. It begins with muscle twitching and degenerates. Eventually, ALS affects control of all of the muscles that you need to speak, to eat, even to breathe. Literally, your body shuts down one cell at a time. But the last to go is the brain. So you become a prisoner in your own motionless body. We are joined here tonight by Tesla's dad. Please welcome to the stage at this moment, Mr. Gary Oldfield. Come here, partner. Tesla might be the most courageous young person that I've ever met, and Tesla might be the single inspiration that all of us have for what we do at the Nebraska Greats Foundation. It was very important to her that she share a message with all of you, and so she sent us a message, and we'd like to share that with you now. Thanks, Jeff. It's an honor to speak with you all tonight. Birds cannot express how grateful I am to their basket of grades. In November 2018, that my daughter was one years old, doctors diagnosed me with ALS. As a 27-year-old young mother, I was faced with a diagnosis that usually takes a person's life within two to five years. I thought back to my years playing softball and running cross country at Peru stage. Then knew that the grand determination that I developed as a college athlete was going to help me through this difficult diagnosis. Now, three and a half years later, they with the most parts of my body no longer work very well. My smear and character are hard at work. I am determined to make each day count. I am determined to show my little girl the joy is not dependent on circumstances. But as a result of strong faith, I am determined to honor God because my life and legacy. My mom and sister have done an excellent job of taking care of they, but they both have full-time jobs. Thanks to your amazing generosity, I now have loving caregivers to be with me with my mom and sister kid. They take excellent care of me that have allowed me to live in my home with my daughter during these precious days. Thank you to Basket Greats for cheering me on this my greatest race that for literally giving me the cost of fish life. I am forever grateful. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, can't thank you enough. Thank you for your contributions tonight. Thank you for your support. Thank you for what you do for our great college sports heroes. And I invite you to get a cocktail and then come back for the Zach Miller Band. Until then, Houston Alexander, an MMA champion, is my man at the music. He's our DJ tonight. So give it up for Houston Alexander. Give it up for yourselves. Thank you. Big night. God bless everybody.